So as you are aware, this is about our ROI calculator. It's probably not something that all of you have seen. It's uh, been uh, a, a, a tool that we've used internally for a couple of years now, and it continues to sort of improve over time. We just want to make sure that everybody knows that this tool is available, what kind of capabilities it has, and uh, it might be something that can be very useful for you as you're trying to uh, close orders and, uh, and help people analyze whether MyOx makes sense for them. So what is the return on investment tool? It compares future costs of MyOx uh, to current chemical costs. It can compare a wide variety of alternative chemistries. So anything from regular bleach to gas chlorine to mixed chemistries, whatever you might want to look at, it has the capability to compare those, those things. It is very detailed. It can be used either very simplistically, uh, just by throwing in minimal information, or if you have a lot of information regarding your particular project, it works very, very well to give you more and more accurate information depending on the level of information that, that you can supply. And I'll be going over some of that a little bit later. At the end of this, uh, the slide presentation portion, I'll actually show you what the tool looks like on our end and the kind of reports that it, that it can report out. It does, it does produce a very high quality report. Um, maybe I'm biased, but I actually think that it's, it's one of the more professional looking ROI reports. The really nice thing about it is it contains enough information that even if what you've assumed to begin with is not quite right, it's really powerful for opening up conversation with your client. So they can, uh, they can point out things that says, well, our labor rate maybe isn't quite that, but it, and then you can correct that and it shows all that information very clearly and very concisely, and so it's a it's really nice way to, to open that conversation about about the operating costs and, and the potential payback for the MyOx system. It is available in both English and metric units. So if you prefer to work in metric, uh, we can run it that way. If you prefer to work in English units, we can as well. So you don't have to go back and forth and try to translate uh, one direction or the other. It'll do it both ways. This is just a real, this is the first page that is printed out. And again, I will go ahead and um, uh, cover this in more detail later. And uh, this just shows you sort of what the very cover looks like. So you've got information up at the top that shows just generic customer information, the uh, project information over in the upper left-hand corner, uh, then some very basic information about the piece of equipment that was chosen to be analyzed. In this case, uh, in this example, is a mixed oxidant system a 60-pound vault system, and shows some of the other demand assumptions uh, that were used uh, in, in the uh, further calculation. So see here it has the ability to do things like what do you, what do you, what do you want to analyze, how many years do you want to analyze over, uh, what is your cost of capital, uh, both from interest and inflation point of view, and then there's a whole bunch of other information you can put in about the project. Probably the most key thing that people look at is this chart in the lower right-hand corner. And that shows the point at which you paid back the equipment and you start making money. So obviously, the closer that intersection is over to the left-hand side, the better your payback is. And uh, that's usually where people gravitate to right away when they look at these reports, is they'll, they'll look at that first and then see where that looks, where that falls. And if it falls far to the left, you usually have a real good project that you're looking at. So how can it actually help you close the business? I think in many cases, MyOx is more cost competitive than the current cost structure. Uh, and uh, I think sometimes we even underestimate how much a customer can potentially save over the lifetime of a plant. And this very clearly and, and uh, professionally shows that, 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 that information to your, to your client. And it's, uh, sometimes these numbers are really big. I mean, it's a lot of people, they look at just a short-term payback, but, but when you actually show them how much money they save over, let's say, a 15-year life, it can be a really compelling number for people. And so uh, uh, that's why this, this tool can be very, very helpful for you and um, help you justify a purchase by clearly reporting the payback time and the overall lifetime savings of, of the system. And as I mentioned earlier, it's really great to use this as a conversation starter with your client or a conversation continuer. It's really great when you have a client that you're getting a lot of feedback back and forth to either revise numbers or take a look at different sizing scenarios or take a look at, at different, uh, different, different uh, cost scenarios or installation cost scenarios and, and, and gives you a lot of flexibility to sort of look at the different ways that, that you might be able to structure a, structure a deal. 
currently this is a controlled document, so it is not available publicly. However, we are looking at creating a simplified version of this that is going to be available to our partners and our account, our account partners. Uh, but right now, this one is, is, is a controlled document that is internal to MyOx and is available through your account manager. So if you can get your account manager that information, they can generate a report for you. And then if you've got any modifications, uh, just get them on the phone or report, report to them by email and make those modifications and we'll be happy to rerun it for you and, 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 and start that, that, that refinement process. So once they get the information, they'll generate and modify the report based on the information you provide and feedback. You can provide a little information or you can provide a lot of information. Obviously, the more information that you provide, the better the better the information the better the report is going to be. So, if you can provide things like local labor rates, if you know what the local salt rate is, so we don't have to try to guess. Um, if you know what their temperature is, if they're buying regular bleach, and I'll show you some of those features as well. All of those things can go towards towards helping develop the most compelling model that you possibly can. So just as a real quick brief, so information that's required includes both mandatory and non-mandatory information. And these lists are pretty long, so I won't necessarily go through them all. But one of the reasons I want to show you even some of the non-mandatory information here is to show you the types of things that this can take into account, which is a lot more than typical return on investment calculators can do. So as far as mandatory information, got to have a product product project identifier, name, location, so what is this thing actually called? Um, demand of the system, is it, is it you know, 20 pound per day, is it 100 pound per day, is it a 50 kilogram per day application? The uh, uh, chemical being compared, so are we comparing this to just regular delivered bleach, uh, sodium hypochlorite, are we comparing to gas, calcium hypochlorite, or even a custom blend? So we, there is a sort of catch-all box that you can use. So if you're do, replacing multiple biocides, for example, on a cooling tower, you can go ahead and put that total operating cost in there, and it'll make that comparison for you as well. Uh, it also has the ability to do conventional chemistry usage uh, if performing a microflocculation calculation. So uh, or I should say it has the ability to calculate savings based on microflocculation effects. So if you're working on a project, where, where there's a strong possibility that you're going to save coagulant and polymer due to uh, pre-oxidation and microflocculation effects, we need to know what that base cost of chemical is, and then we can make some estimates as to how much chemical they're going to save, and this has the ability to do that analysis as well. Non-mandatory information, uh, there's a lot of it that is non-mandatory, and please note that if you don't provide it to us, we may estimate it to drive the calculation. You can always go back and modify it later, so it's, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but that includes local labor rates. Usually people like to use fully burdened, uh, uh, fully burdened per hour rate. Um, cost of money information. So if you have a customer that has a particular you know, they always use 12% as a cost of capital, or they always use 8% as a cost of capital. Let us know that. We can inc incorporate that. Otherwise, we'll kind of just make some estimates on that. Local salt and electrical costs, if available. If not, we, again, will make an estimate based on sort of our experience in that particular part of the country or particular part of the world. Temperature range of the plant. If you're primarily this is if you're going to be doing a, a hypochlorite comparison. This calculator has the ability to actually take into account the degradation of sodium hypochlorite based on temp average temperatures in the room. And so uh, that sometimes pushes up the actual usage of the sodium hypochlorite that a customer is using because they may see high degradation rates uh, from original purchase. And this has the ability to do that. Again, if you don't have that information, um, uh, if you don't actually have that information, the uh, uh, you know we don't have to actually use that. But if you do, it's kind of a nice, nice extra bonus on the system. Installation costs. We can certainly make a guess on installation costs about about what we think it will be. However, that can vary very widely depending on the installation. So if the customer is putting in a new building, that might be a little bit higher. If they have particularly high labor rates at a, lo a certain location, that's good stuff to know. Um, uh, so if you have a rough idea of relative installation costs, uh, that's a good thing to know. Speed water temperature range. So again, not necessary, but if you do have it, 
this will automatically calculate the need for heating and cooling into the generator and take that small power component uh, into account as well. Evaluation period. Some customers like to look at 10 years. Some look, they like to look at 15. Some like to look at 20. If you have a particular preference, let us know. Otherwise, we normally just have it set at 15 years. Security and insurance costs for gas chlorine, those can be significant in some cases and represent a very compelling picture for them to get rid of those uh, security insurance costs. So if you're comparing to gas chlorine, great to know that information. Current upgrade costs, so perhaps you have a customer that is looking at staying, potentially staying, let's say, with sodium hypochlorite, but they have to buy a new tank and they have to buy new pumps. Uh, if that is the case, uh, then let's go ahead and get those costs in there as well so they can compare new install with Myox versus upgrade and continue with the alternative chemistry. And it has the ability to do all of those as well. Uh, current maintenance costs that any associated with the plant, we usually try to get at that if, if that number isn't provided. And current chemical costs, of course, are always key. Uh, those can vary widely depending on location. So if you know what the current chemical cost structure is, that, that absolutely drives, these, uh, drives the accuracy of these. 